All right, good Tuesday practice. A lot of situations, a lot of first down, second down, goal line stuff, short yardage. Uh, pretty good day. Pretty good, pretty good solid work. Today. Keep you developing those young guys, getting them better, getting them more reps, getting to see them out there on the field is good. So, you know, got to keep working. Have a good day. Questions? Yeah, that's bright. Well, when you look at Louisville, of course, we talk so much about Lamar, but what is it about defending an offense like that where there's so many moving pieces that is important for your defense this week? Well, I mean, just add this. No, it, it's actually more normal than it is abnormal. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of way offense is going now. I mean, all the quarterback runs, and we call them circus runs, and you're pulling the – reading the end, pulling the lead blocker, two lead blockers. I mean, reverse – I mean, it's just the way things are going now. But they're, they're, the thing is they got good players, and they do what they do very well. That's the key to what they're doing. So why does the quarterbacks seem more comfortable playing starting earlier in their careers now? I don't know. I think uh, they're forced they're, – they're exposed to more at earlier ages, much more, I think. And even from the world of travel. I mean, it used to be – I mean, guys, when you recruit them 15 years ago, they had a lot of them hadn't been out of their community or been – played a game two hours away. Now they're going to All-American games, going to All-American camps. They know all the players. They know all the people. They've been in environments and atmosphere. you got – High school games and major TV games on TV. So all the atmosphere and things that a lot of times that in college you had to just adapt to in time, I think a lot of that's getting sped up. And then you're throwing more. I mean, all the 707s and all the camps, they're just getting exposed to more and they're developing quicker. Any of the uh, offensive linemen who have been banged up? Curry Crane practiced today. Wilson was out there today. Uh, I don't think who else you're asking about. Ask you hit me off. Well, in Kareem, he's missed a lot of time, though. Is he, is he to yeah, no, he, he's been conditioning and doing all that. He, and he's had contact, so he was back in contact and all that this week. So conditioning and all that stuff, he, he was fine. He took all reps. He took reps like a full practice today. Drew, you said uh, the surgery would kind of determine how long Derwin might miss. Yeah, they sewed it to be a little longer. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know that you'll – I mean, you're talking five, six, seven weeks or so at least, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and how it heals. But they sewed it, which is really good for him because that means they saved every inch of the cartilage. Which is really good. And but with them, um, when you guys, fall, which I heard some of y'all didn't know, meniscus was cartilage. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right uh, you say you're not a doctor. We're definitely not doctors. Golly, you ain't as much as y'all been around ball and know meniscus wasn't car cartilage and meniscus are the same thing. Come uh, on, guys. I uh, huh? I skipped bio. Come on, guys. No, I'm teasing. I had to get you on that. I, I shocked. Huh? <laughs> much as you, I, 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 I assume because in the terminology when y'all write about stuff, sometimes I guess it's. I'm asking too all the time. I don't know half the stuff. Mm -hmm. I do know that one. <laughs> well, uh, when you're uh, when you're when you're play calling, how much in the beginning of a game, say things don't go well, how much do you want to try to stick with the whole week of planning versus having to make those kind of in-game adjustments? Well, you always stick with the whole week of planning, but how we teach concepts in our offense, we can adapt and go to a different part of it, just like that. And how we do it from a different personnel grouping, and in most of your when you're in an NFL offense. You do have that ability because of how we teach conceptually. Whether we're going to need to move the pocket, or whether we need to go to quick game, we need more power run, we need more to more spread run. I mean, you can do it, and it's still within the same confines of what you're doing. So, I mean, you got to feel that. That that's a feel that's got to go. And then also, not what you want to do. What are they capable of doing? And when you have young guys, sometimes they haven't been exposed to a lot. That can also hamper you in certain situations. And it can only be one or two of them. I mean, you got nine of them. You got one or two. You got to remember, it's all eleven. So. It, it becomes a very delicate line to, to walk, what you need to do, to what you can do, to what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's no fun. How, how much does that come at halftime, or, or is it more? No, you, you got to do it on the run. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on the run. You gotta look, you got to look at that sheet tell you what to do, you got problems. <laughs> a guy like Landon Dickerson, only 17 years old, is he kind of the epitome of there being no age limit on talent? No, I mean, you, you get a lot of those guys like that now. I mean, it's crazy. And, and what's more important, which is rare about an offensive lineman, his body was ready to do it. A lot of times your skill guys will be like that. A lot of times your offensive lineman, that's a, that's a hard mismatch. That's like, you know, why it's hard for, you know, the NFL, for high school guys to go to pro football. You'll never see that in, in, in time like you do in other sports because physically they can't do it. And he's one of the few linemen that do have the size and strength to be able to play at this level, which is rare. It's even more rare for linemen to do it, in my opinion. How do you think he did in his first start? I thought he played very solid. He did a nice job in the game. And then as the game went on, you could see him just relaxing and picking it up more and more. He's going to be one heck of a player. These sort of games, you and Louisville, 2v10, of course, game day, that whole atmosphere. Uh -huh. What do you think it does in terms of just kind of getting more eyes to the ACC? Because it seemed well, like with man. the coaching off season and everything like that, there was a lot of attention. Well, and uh, like we said, we've had, we're playing great ball. And then they're playing great ball, we're playing. And, it, I mean, to have game day there, that says with, with other marquee games going on around the country that this is one of the premier conferences. And we got a very, very good conference. I mean, like I said, a couple years ago, 
our side, when us, we had 11, we had the most guys drafted of any division in college football. That ACC is really good football, and I think it's really good for our league that this is happening. What are the benefits of playing such a tough schedule early? Well, you find out who you are. You find out what your problems are, and you also get in those atmospheres and environments for later on when those games, you know, if you're forced enough to get through them to where they matter, to where it, it becomes a new normal that you're expecting to see tons of reporters, your cameras, you know, all that stuff. It, it becomes a new normal for you, so that's, that's a very good thing. You, you kind of almost block it out to a point. Jim, are you surprised that you feel like you have to keep kind of talking up the ACC? You won a championship in 2013, playoff 2014, Clemson in the, in the title last year. I just think it's oh, I think it's something that over time it's been ingrained. It'll just take time to get it out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just think it's like you say, culture of a place. Sometimes a place doesn't change. It, the players change, but the culture doesn't change. Nothing ever changes. You know what I'm saying? The culture is now evolving and changing. It's just culture takes time. It just doesn't change overnight. So it's the first episode of the Showtime show, and you were talking about how hard you were on DeAndre. And, and kind of, when you see that, do, do you say, okay, I'm doing it the way I need to do it, or dial it up, dial it back? No, I mean, I do that daily. I mean, I come in sometimes and I feel bad. But then you know, like I've got, if I got on him too hard, but then we'll talk to him. And he, but I always explain it to him because, I mean, I something. What would have prepared him? What, how else do you prepare him for going into what he went into the other night? I mean, down 28-6, to six, uh, home crowd, everybody in a national spotlight. I mean, there was some grit and grind there, that, and it paid off on our team. And that's the only way I know to do it. I mean, but you're always trying. Yeah, you've got to walk a fine line when you push guys to let them know you still love them and you're behind them. But you can't let them be content to not get pushed. I mean, there's always that edge. You've got to have that edge. And you go, I mean, you heard the stories about Peyton Manning when he plays. You heard the stories about Tom Brady when he practiced. Jameis Winston was the same way. Christian Ponder was that way. You know, guys I had. E.J. Manuel was a great competitor like that. I mean, I go back to Rohan David, Jamarcus Rowe. I mean, those guys grinded, man. I mean, and when they played. Matt Ma. I mean, and they understood, and that's why they were successful. And that's the only way I know to do it. What's the status on Malik Henry? He's, he's still like he is right now. I mean, he's he suspended until we bring him back. You, you talk about just kind of being on guys like DeAndre, and of course we saw a bit of a clip today with you with Derwin. With this experience, does it give you a chance to kind of go back and, and look at these moments and, and maybe kind of take things from them, or do you even rewatch that kind of stuff? I don't right now. I mean, I live it every day, and it's kind of – if I got to go back and evaluate that, I mean, it's, it's how I live every day. And I question myself every day. Do I do the right things for the kids? Do I not? And, you know, it's – you can just move on. You don't have time to go back and do that. Just make sure they understand what you're trying to do. Nate Andrews, how is he doing in Good. practice? Practice well. Seen practice very well and hopefully be out there playing. What do you think Travis has done the first two games? Played very solidly. I think he's had a very solid camp. I mean, he has some great camp. I think he's played real well. And I still think there's another level he's pushing himself to, which I'm not disappointed at all. I mean, he's playing really good football, and we expect him to keep getting there. Just with his connection with DeAndre, how has that been able to click so quickly? Well, I mean, I just think they work together. I mean, those guys put a lot of time in the offseason, as they did with all those receivers. I mean, those guys threw and caught continually, and people don't realize how much behind the work scenes those guys do together. With, with throwing out, who's really stepping up in the secondary? The same guys. I mean, you got Nate, you got Trey Marshall, you got Marquez White. I mean, all those guys are stepping up and, and doing a real nice job. Is AJ filling his role? Oh, yeah, AJ's doing great. AJ's a good player. He plays a lot. When you have game day come in, is there an advantage to being the road team because you're not around it for two, three days? And uh, I don't want to pay attention to it. It's a new, no, that's normal. That's a, what, 10th, 12th time we've had it? We had it four times a couple years ago in one year. I mean, it was, was most there. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it's if we keep doing the things we do, we'll have a lot of them. Jim, are you guys, are you guys doing anything sound-wise for, for the road? Yeah, we will. We're, we're doing some stuff right now. And we'll, we'll hit it really hard in the next two days. We did some today, but we'll hit it really hard in the next two days. All right.